let's have a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of um, pair and group work. And I can say from the start that the advantages are going to outweigh the disadvantage, but it's good to know uh, what those disadvantages are. Okay, so advantages. Um, what we have and what pair work and group work provides us with is uh, um, more people to interact with. Um, in a teacher-centered classroom, um, the teacher interacts with the student. But in a particular group and pair work situation, students get a, a chance to interact with each other and uh, in, in groups. Um, the exchange of information in this sense may be more natural than in the kind of power differential that exists between the teacher and the student. Okay, two. Um, there's more flexibility of task assignment. Um, um, you can begin to assign different types of tasks and you can have different tasks for different ability levels, um, even within your own classroom. And that allows you to give pair work, group work, which has easier tasks and more difficult tasks. So um, it's a greater opportunity for those um, better students to move faster than those slower students. Three, um, we maximize the practice opportunities. There's only so much uh, language production that can be made in a teacher-centered classroom. Um, in a pair work, group work situation, we can multiply the chances of practice. So more chances to speak, and it also allows um, for greater variety of activities and greater variety of types of language used. Um, so um, if there's information gaps, communication gaps, opinion gaps, these will cover different kinds of functional language than you would get if you had just an interchange between teacher and student. Four, um, it probably improves um, the effective climate. Um, uh, it's less threatening to be communicating with your peers than it is with your your teacher. Um, and um, we refer to teacher-centered classrooms as lockstep. Everybody goes at the same pace, dictated by the teacher. Uh, it, pair work, group work may be more motivating, um, and you might find greater chances to explore um, self-expression, and you might feel as though you can make more errors and mistakes because you're in a less threatening environment than speaking to the teacher. And um, it encourages cooperation. Um, and um, that should be an essential part of any classroom. Um, five, classroom pace and dynamic. Um, what it allows for is a change of pace and the change of the interaction dynamic. So if we're having a teacher-fronted classroom, teacher to students in a plenary situation, then we can change that pace by moving to pair and group work. Um, and that helps maintain interest in the lesson. It help, helps main con um, maintain concentration. So any changes of pace are essential in the classroom. And if you want a ballpark figure, think about 20 minutes, change of pace. Um, six, um, it has been argued very strongly, but um, parent, uh, parent group work especially in communication gap activities, facilitates second language acquisition because they provide opportunities for students to negotiate meaning. What did you mean? I didn't quite get that. Can you say that again? What's that word you use there? These are all ways of negotiating the meaning of the exchange. Um, so asking for clarification, comprehension checks, um, syntactic modifications are the kinds of things which allow students to develop their language skills and acquire the language. Um, so this is a fundamental part of task-based language teaching, that creating activities which allow for the negotiation of meaning are uh, further second language acquisition. Okay, let's do the um, disadvantages. Um, student perceptions. Um, 
And this is often the way that students may respond to um, um, pair work. Other students may provide poor language models to be perceived as providing poor um, language models. Um, I'm kind of repeating myself there. What I'm saying is that uh, often students may perceive the person that they're working with as providing inadequate um, um, uh, language proficiency, and that in itself may turn the student off the particular activity. Um, think again also of learning preferences, learning styles. Um, learners may have a preference for lockstep classrooms and teacher as an authority figure. And that may be a group of students who come from a particular cultural background which which um, gives only gives validity to the teacher-led classroom and sees something like pair work and groom work a kind of inferior type class activity. Um, there may be environmental problems. Um, Pair and group work can be noisy. Do you have the particular classroom space where that particular noise level can be contained? Or there may be institutional um, uh, reactions to that kind of classroom where you have a lot of chatter going on rather than a teacher-fronted classroom. Um, it may be, of course, a big problem in monolingual classrooms where you've got um, two L1 speakers. Um, and their tendency to resort to the L1 or to, to complete the task as best as possible, which may involve using the L1. Um, of course, there may be problems of group dynamics, and that can ha happen in all classrooms. And um, that may be something that can be solved by uh, grouping students in particular ways, but it's always going to be an underlying problem with um, parent group work. Um, in large classes, uh, it may be a problem providing the kind of materials that uh, are required by parent group work. Um, 50, 60 students, how many handouts do you need to provide? Uh, there may be problems of control, teacher monitoring that number of students, and of course, again, the noise levels. Um, uh, another particular feature is effective factors, um, and when students practice with themselves and when they practice in terms of a teacher-centered classroom, there may be a fear of being overheard while doing pair work activity. One way of solving that is screening student practice by playing some music in the background, which has a very nice effect of helping students um, avoid the inhibition of being heard and therefore to get on with the um, particular practice. Um, let me just backtrack a little bit um, to go back to those students who don't see the value of pair work and prefer teacher-centered um, um, classrooms um, where the, the teacher provides the authority figure. Um, that is a matter of, of, of teachers taking that into consideration and being able to explicit, explicitly show to students how valuable pair and group work is. Um, let me finish with a couple of slides. Here's a quote from uh, McDonough and Shaw. The classroom is clearly a place where people have to work together, essentially requiring a compromise between their own individuality and the dynamics of the whole group. So pair and group work is essentially one way of trying to instill those particular values of cooperation. To continue, um, in other words, it's ideally a cooperative environment where structuring activities in different ways, quite apart from the primary language learning function, can allow for the establish establishment of a cohesive and collaborative working atmosphere. So essentially, pair and group work can have important effects upon classroom morale, on creating collaboration and cooperation among students. Um, and let me one conclude one um, last slide. And um, what I'm looking at here is the multiple effects of um, pair and group work and how they can be considered in different methodological approaches. So um, pair and group work has a fundamental importance for classroom management in terms of changes of pace. 
And that can, and, and dynamic, and that can be seen an essential part of CLT, communicative language teaching. Um, in terms of the notion of um, the activity itself promoting negotiated meaning and the kinds of interactional modifications which are part of um, the negotiation meaning, that's an essential part of task-based language teaching. If we look at the learning mode, uh, and in terms of learning strategies and uh, the kind of effect, effective factors that uh, that pair and group work encourages, and, and together with the notion of critical thinking and the sharing of ideas, that leads into the particular approach of cooperative learning. And finally, finally, as a learning tool in a content-based classroom, of course, pair and group work is the creation of research teams who together uh, work together to, um, uh, to research particular areas uh, in the particular content area that's being chosen. So each of these particular methods or approaches, communicative language teaching, task-based language teaching, cooperative learning, and content-based instruction, um, all benefit from this essential notion of pair and group work.